Good evening, all of you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. In a way, all of you are fellow mates of mine. I've been associated with SPJ IMR in multiple roles over the many, many years, in fact, decades. My early association with SPJ IMR, of course, as you know, was as a student. And then it has evolved to being a visiting faculty, to being a recruiter, to being a colleague of several other students who passed out of SPJMR, and more recently, a member of the governing council. So I have seen SPJMR through decades and years, and all in different roles with different hats. This is maybe the perfect time to reminiscence of the time and the era of SPJMR, which many of you can't even imagine. Yes, the campus was the same. We were all in the 1984-86 batch on Bhavan's campus. But for those of you who don't know, we started off on the second floor of the chemistry building of Bhavan's college. And that's all we had. Two classrooms, one for first year, one for second year, one library, four cabins for the core faculty, and one director's cabin. That's what we had. But we had the time of our life. Some of us stayed in the hostel, and I was one of them. And our hostel then was not compulsory. Uh, so maybe 20, 25% of us stayed on campus in what was the SPC engineering hostel. So we've started from those days of spending time in the canteen, going out and eating at, I don't remember the names, all the names now, but it was maybe the House of Foods, Swadesh, and a place, I don't know if it's still there, called Raj, uh, which is where we spent several evenings uh, not being able to eat the food in the canteen mess. And... I know many of you may be feeling bad about not having this convocation. But in the time that we passed out of college, we didn't even know what convocation was. There was no such concept. And uh, we got our certificate of graduation because that those were the days when it was a Mumbai University exam. And the mark sheet would come months later after we started working. And sometime in the maybe months, maybe six, nine months later, we would get a certificate uh, of the University of Mumbai. So it was a long process and there was nothing, like I said, about convocation. For those of you who are feeling you're missing out on the convocation, I think you should take relief from the fact that you've actually been amongst the more fortunate ones. You've gone through two full years on campus. Just imagine if you had a convocation, but no campus life. So I really think that convocation is important in a way, but what's more important are your memories and the bonding that you have. Even so many years later, we have a 1986 batch WhatsApp group, which is continuously flooded with posts. And that's so many years later. So I believe what you really are taking away our memories, learnings, and bonds. And I'm sure as things open up, all of you will want to come back together on campus. And I can tell you as an alum, I would be very happy to join that celebration party if you would like to have me. The college has come a long, long way from the times when I was there. It's evolved into an institution of standing and repute. And to be honest, a lot of that has been built on one single factor. And that single factor has been the track record of our students. SPJMR students have gone out consistently and outperformed in every organization they've worked in and have really and truly made a difference. And it's hence a great time to give credit to the institution, but all the faculty in the institution who have shaped us up into who we all are today. We are today a product of a certain mindset and an attitude. That mindset and attitude has been one of 
it's as important, if not more, to deliver than to strategize. Strategizing will only get you so far. At the end of the day, what your organizations look for is your ability to execute, to deliver, and make things happen. And I think, you know, out of the various people I've seen over the several decades I've worked, SPJMR students are able to do this with a completely different mindset and approach than most others. And that's because the college has grounded all of us, has made us through various interventions very connected with reality. And this comment of mine creates the perfect segue for me to talk about some learnings and takeaways that I have, which I would like you to think about. I can't say as you get into your work life because you already are, but as you think about your future, the first thing which I would strongly believe in coming out of my experience is while we keep an eye on the sky, we must keep our feet on the ground. Very often we have lofty goals, audacious visions, and they're all very good. But if we don't keep our feet on the ground, we lose touch with reality. And anyone who loses touch with reality is never going to see their dreams materialize. One has to be inquisitive and have learning agility. Without learning agility, you're going to be a relic. There is nothing as I know, because none of us know even 10% of what we need to know. Having been in so many organizations and roles, I can say today that I probably don't even know more than 10 or 15% of what my role needs me to know. I can try and learn, but I have to accept that I can only know so much. And hence, if you really want to keep your feet on the ground, you have to reach out and connect. Connect with people, connect with stakeholders, because that's where real grounding happens. And all of you have been really groomed to make that happen. The important thing is don't forget that grooming when you start working. It's going to be your most important differentiator. The second input for all of you is be decisive and fearless. Very often, the reason we aren't so is because we are scared of risks. We're scared of taking those risks. You're not going to succeed unless you take risks. And that doesn't mean you are reckless. You have to calibrate, but you have to move. You have to be firm and you have to be decisive. Every organization expects that from you. The often used term for that is paralysis by analysis. Lots of MBAs tend to get into that because you know so much, you think you know so much, you want to analyze everything to death. It doesn't work. You have to learn out of how to use limited information that you have, make some judgments and quick calls and get into then execute it. The third takeaway and learning I would leave for you is be adaptive. People often operate in the zero one mode that I'm this type of a leader or I'm that type of a leader. I'm very strategic or my role needs me to be very strategic or my role needs to be needs me to be very execution focused. There is no zero one on this. There are situations when I would say as a CEO, roll up my sleeves and go into 10 levels of depth on what may be happening in one particular territory, market, segment, product group, or whatever it is. And there are times when the situation doesn't need me to do that and I won't. So the level of detail and depth that we need versus the width is something that you will have to adapt based on the situation, based on the team you're working with, based on the market context. So be adaptive. Don't believe that I'm a this style leader or a that style leader. You have to be every style leader, but you have to be able to pick appropriately the style to use in a given situation. Those who do that well, succeed. Those who don't do that well are too single-minded and unilateral. The next or the fourth input is be authentic. And, and being authentic doesn't mean 
you are rash. Being authentic is being open, transparent, true to yourself. But perfecting the art of being able to say what you have to say in the most acceptable way. Because the reason for giving feedback is you want someone to work on it. You don't want to give feedback to run the other person down. So when you're being authentic, you need to find the right way for your feedback to be worked on. This is easier said than done. And if you learn to do this, you will really, really be seen as someone who is adding value to things. And the last thought, something which I don't think I was strong at over the youthful years of my life, is be high on empathy and doing it. It's only over time that you will learn that even in the most difficult situations, you're separating with separating some people or uh, you know having a situation which is people related, you have to take tough decisions, but there is an empathic way to do it. You may have a series of achievements behind you, but if you lose your humility, you are going to lose the respect of your team. So my five key messages for you all are keep your eye on the sky, but feet on the ground. Be decisive, fearless, but be mindful of the risks. Be adaptive, seamlessly move between depth and width. Be authentic, but find the right way of sharing your inputs and feedback. And the last is the most valuable thing you can do is be empathic and you're humble. As I end this message, I would like to leave you with the thought that at the end of the day, you are the brand ambassadors of SPGIMR. As you're going out and building your own personal brands, don't forget that the brand you build is also the brand called SPGIMR. It's a responsibility all of us have shouldered and it's a responsibility that you should shoulder because who we are today is because of all the effort that the faculty and the alumni have put in by building a reputation. That has made us great. I'm sure as all of you build your journeys, your careers and your paths, you will take us from great to great, greater and greater heights. That's a responsibility that you need to carry as all the previous alum have done that. That's our greatest differentiator. The value that our students bring, the organizations that they work in. And I'm sure you will do that. I wish all of you a very, very successful journey in your life. And like I said, my offer to party with you when you choose to do that or when you are able to do that still stands. So please do reach out to me if and when you want me to come in and join the celebration. I would love to be part of it. Thank you and all the best.